friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah Ruth and this is The Woman in Wool in Woman in Wool Wednesdays. On this channel we talk about mostly Irish history while I crochet something. I'm not a historian by any means, just a nerd with too much time on your hands. Um, and thanks for joining me for all of that. <laughs> Grab your own project or watch me watch mine, get yourself a cup of tea, and let's start chatting. First things first though is what I'm working on. This is a baby blanket. I am crocheting it, but it does have the Aran cables in it that are quite famous in Ireland and I'm working on a way to make them um, with crochet instead of knitting. It's for a baby that is coming into the world in October. It will be done by then. Hopefully it'll be done this week and we'll have a montage of me making it. Absolutely no promises though. And today's project is something a little bit less academic than last week's. It is something that is near and dear to my heart though and I foresee people getting a little bit angry at me for and that is my Logo. My logo, as you can see, is an incredible original drawing made by my friend Ray Wayne Gonzalez. I'll be linking all of her uh, things down in the description below so that you can check her out. She's an artist based out of New York City, um, and she is the one that made my logo. It is a design that I created, or I didn't create, I thought of it, and I told her that this is what I wanted, and she made it for me. It's a very chillaxed four-leaf clover design. Now, if you're Irish, I know that you are bursting to tell me that the four leaf clover isn't actually from Ireland or Irish. Yeah, I know, neither am I. And that's part of the fun. But now we're here and you just gotta get used to it. But why is it associated with Ireland? Why is it considered lucky? What's the real story of its brother, the shamrock? Why am I talking like a news report? To start with the real story of the four leaf clover and how it became associated with luck and Ireland, uh, you have to kind of go all the way back a little bit further as we do uh, to its brother, the shamrock, or the three-leaf clover. Which means it's time for everyone's favorite Irish icon, St. Patrick. Oh yeah, he's here. We're talking about St. Patrick. Finally, um, also not originally from Ireland, running theme for the day. St. Patrick was originally a young boy from Wales or Western England, but scholars can agree that he was British. He came from a well-to-do family that were all involved in the Catholic Church in some way. His father was a deacon in a very high up Roman family, and his grandfather was also a clergyman, and his mom was a close relative of the patron Saint Martin of Tours, Conchessa, little Miss Patrick's mom racking up Saint Point. I wonder if they have like nepotism in heaven, like the like the more saints you know, the more you get in, like Hollywood. Or if it's just like having a couple of doctors in the family and that's all you can talk about, like, you know, my cousin's a doctor. You know, my cousin's a patron saint. You know, you know, my son is a patron saint. My son is actually a patron saint. Did you know? I tell everyone, like a Facebook mom. Patrick lived in the late fourth, early fifth centuries, born in 386 AD. And although Patrick is credited for bringing Christianity to the island of Ireland, there are sources like Irish News and a few others that I found that seems to show that Christianity was on the island before Patrick came in. It depends on what version of history um, you're looking at. I haven't dug too much into it because it's not too important to today's story, but we'll get into it in another video. But this is not a story about St. Patrick. This is a story about the four-leaf clover. So diving into that. Uh, so we're going to skip a few sections of Patty's life and jump right into the part that everybody wants to hear about. Now, although there is evidence of Christianity before St. Patrick, the main consensus within this version of history is that the population of Ireland was mainly pagan before Paddy came to town. And he came and educated them on the saving light of Jesus and all that stuff. Very good. And before Catholicism, Ireland had a mainly pagan history with godlike creatures called the Tua de Danon. This was a polytheistic religious view, and each of the Tua had different roles and scopes within life, kind of like the Greek and Roman gods. The main story is that St. Patrick came to Ireland and was educating the people of Ireland about Catholicism and the one God, one holy father in heaven, all that stuff. When St. Patrick came to educate the people of Ireland in the name of the one holy God, the, pe the polytheistic people of Ireland didn't necessarily understand how there could be one God and three gods, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It just didn't make sense. And that's when St. Patrick bent down and picked up a perfect little three-leaf shamrock clover uh, and gave the people of Ireland a visual on how something can be both three in one. Now this is the legend. We can't be sure if this is truly how things went down, but it is lovely to think about somebody potentially explaining their religion to their child in this way, maybe for hundreds of years, because that's how they heard the story and they passed it down 
generation to generation and hopes that their kids would learn the same. Now, the four-leaf clover has a much simpler, much less inspiring origin story, and that is that it is just less common, you know? So, yep, the most popular symbol of luck in the world is just kind of a mutation that's kind of rare. The idea was that if you were lucky enough to find one, meant you were lucky. There are, of course, other legends tying the four-leaf clover in as a symbol of luck, one being that Eve herself picked a four-leaf clover as a souvenir from the Garden of Eden as she and Adam were being kicked out. I can't necessarily be sure of this. I only found one resource that talks about it, but potentially if you know of any more, leave it down in the comment section below. I'd love to know more about that. And there's another rumor that ancient Celts thought that the four-leaf clover could bring them mystical powers of protection and even help them see fairies. Again, not too many resources on this one. I could only find one or two, but leave more down in the comments because I would really love to hear more about that as well. And seeing fairies was kind of a bonus, a big boon in the ancient Celtic world because fairies could literally kill you. So seeing them was like a, like a warning. You could get away really quick. Good stuff. But the four-leaf clover as a symbol of Irish luck is always something kind of funny to think about, especially with phrases like the luck of the Irish working its way into the cultural narrative somehow. Things like lucky charms and pots of gold at the end of the rainbow seem to wriggle their way in there and make luck and being Irish seem to go hand in hand. Also not to mention, this is a bit of a tangent, now bear with me, The Luck of the Irish is also a 2001 Disney Channel original movie and it's hilarious. It follows the life and times of, you know, normal stuff, like a teenage boy who's secretly a leprechaun who gets his lucky charm stolen away from him by another evil leprechaun in America and they have to play basketball in order to save themselves. Just like a normal movie. I feel like I should make a whole movie about the Disney Channel original movie, Luck of the Irish, and make Irish people watch it. That seems like a good video. But while we all sat there and had our fingers crossed for the Luck of the Irish to show itself when we needed it, the luck of the Irish has been historically pretty bad. With things like failed rebellions, famines, and oppressive laws that kept Irish as second-class citizens in their own country, it's really odd to think about how the luck of the Irish can somehow be twisted and navigated into something else, something much better and much more positive. So that said, where did this whole luck of the Irish thing come from? Well, that, my friends, is an Irish-American tale. In the late 19th century, America was having a kind of gold and silver rush across the country, a period of time where gold and silver started to get found across America and people would go out and look for it. Well, apparently some of the most lucrative and successful people during this gold rush were Irish immigrants and people of Irish descent whose parents were from Ireland. So the luck of the Irish phrase was actually an Irish American creation to describe the fortuitous situations of Irish miners who, more likely than not, didn't have another means of making money. That's of course speculation. Don't quote me on that, but it is something that I like to think about. How else were these oppressed immigrants making money if not by panning for gold? Don't get it twisted though. The phrase, the luck of the Irish was not some lighthearted, jolly little phrase that we think about it today. It was actually meant to belittle the Irish and essentially patronize them and play down the actual efforts that Irish people would have to do, spending long days in mines, panning for gold, working really hard, down to just sheer dumb luck thus forever equating luck with Irishness and Irishness with four-leaf clovers, even though they kind of had nothing to do with each other. And I know what you're thinking though, lucky charms, pot of gold, gold rush, end of the rainbow, it's all starting to make sense. But actually, no. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow was actually a fairy myth that had gone back for hundreds of years, saying that leprechauns, all who had a pot of gold, would hide their gold at the end of the rainbow because one, it'd be really hard to find and nobody would know to look there, and two, even if you did know where to find it and you knew it would be at the end of the rainbow, it's really hard to get to the end of the rainbow. Have you ever tried? Once you get there, it just seems to kind of disappear. I say that like I spend my time like chasing around rainbow ends and stuff. I'm not, I'm not that bad. <laughs> like I'm not that weird. I'm like wear corsetry in a video weird, crochet and talk about something weird, but not chase light particles weird. Yet. Now in my own speculations, this could be something that conflated Irishness and gold and clovers together with time and one lump of cultural misappropriation. Well, there it is folks. Today was a bit shorter. It was a bit less academic than last week's video. A walkthrough of the four leaf clover, where it comes from, why it's associated with Ireland and luck, why Ireland is considered lucky, and of course some good old fashioned Irish prejudice of the 1800s. Gotta get that in there. Ending with me, St. Patrick and a four leaf clover, 
none of us are originally from Ireland, but all making our way here and trying to find a home in it somehow. I think I'm doing a pretty good job. But if we're honest, this is only a small portion as to why the four leaf clover is actually my logo. And the reason the four leaf clover is my logo is not just because of its connection to Ireland when it's not originally from Ireland. And it's not even necessarily because it's whimsical and fun and I like that kind of stuff as well. Um, but it's actually because of this. So I'll insert some footage of this over here of me opening this. This is my own flower press. I love it very much. Um, it's a small collection of mine I've been building since I was a kid. Uh, I had never seen a four-leaf clover before until I was maybe 11 or 12. Not sure of the exact age, but since then they've shown themselves to me more often and I'm eternally grateful. I've tried to share them with others, press them, save them in resin and given them away. I sold a couple, but not many, and I just think they're lovely things to share because they're a bit special. And so I like to show them to people if they would like to see. So this is kind of the reason my logo is a four-leaf clover. They've kind of followed me from America to Ireland, and hopefully I've followed them right back, and they've made themselves present to me, so I'm just eternally grateful for that. I may insert a montage of me crocheting the blanket this time. Maybe not, because it might take me a little bit longer than the doll did. Um, but if so, I'll... Go ahead and put that in there and film an outro of how it turned out. Um, but if not, I just wanted to say that's all from me, folks. Thanks very much for tuning in and walking through St. Patrick and Irish symbols with me for a little bit. Uh, go ahead and like the video right now and subscribe. Uh, follow me at woman.in.wool on TikTok and Instagram. And until then, have a really great day. Thanks for joining me. Of course, uh, sites and resources are down in the description for anybody who's wondering. doesn't make a noise. Oh well. In the late 19th Spunky. and early 20th century. Oh. Spunky.